The Western Wall, Judaism's holiest shrine, now an unholy battleground where Jew fights Jew. We are now reclaiming what belongs to us. The Western Wall, the Torah, the Bible is ours. It was not given to the Orthodox establishment. And we want to be there and we want to have part in it. For Rabbi Ehud Bandel and his congregation, a walk to the wall is a march into battle. They're members of a liberal stream of Judaism known, paradoxically, as conservative. Their presence here, on a religious holiday, is a direct challenge to the most observant of Jews, the Orthodox, who've ruled this place as they've ruled Judaism ever since Israel was created. People have enough. You go in the street, you feel the anger. I'm really afraid what, God forbid, a violence, a civil war that will tear these people apart. For years in Israel, there was no alternative to orthodoxy. It reigned supreme. But new immigrants brought new ideas, new streams of Judaism. Now these people want equal recognition. On one level then, this is the struggle about the control of Judaism. In a broader sense, however, it's about much more than that. It's about what kind of state Israel will be. Will it be a democracy or a theocracy? Zvi Arya Ingbar was once a New York businessman. Now he's a rabbi running a yeshiva, a study centre, in the old city of Jerusalem. Rabbi Ingbar is part of the Haredim, ultra-Orthodox Jews who devote their lives to strict observance and study of the Jewish scriptures, the Torah. So as you say, it's, it's against Hashem and it's hurting him at the same time. That's like, that's Iran. Right. It's, it's, you don't realize... It's an issue of the Torah versus a democratic society. That's what it comes down to. It's a Torah versus a pluralistic society. Rabbi Ingbar has nothing against democracy, but he believes on some things you can't compromise, like the Torah and the commandments. He says life should adapt to the scriptures, not the other way round. On one hand, I'm saying to you that the Torah is not these uh, chest-beating, fist-pumping fundamentalists. That's not what we are. On the other hand, I am telling you clearly that there are certain areas which we can't compromise, and we won't compromise. So what happens when you compromise on the Torah? On the Torah? Uh, what can I tell you? You pull the plug on the universe. In Tel Aviv, however, the universe is quite a different place. It's everything the holy city is not, where sun worshipping is as close to religion as many people ever get. While the ultra-Orthodox wouldn't switch on a light, let alone drive a car on the holy day of rest, here, no one gives it a second thought. 
not even some of the rabbis. I try to appeal to those who want to live in the Jewish world, but at the same time in the modernity. And I see it's, it's, it's a good uh, way of living. Those who would like to stay in the old ghetto, in the shtetl, fine. But who those people to tell me if I'm right or wrong? According to what they did, they did wrong because most of the Jews left them. So simple. Rabbi Meir Azari leads the largest community of Reform Jews in Israel. Here, they're a relatively new and small group, but in the US, together with other liberal Jews, they constitute the majority. Despite this, Reform rabbis are not recognised as kosher by either Israel's Jewish authorities or the government. There are uh, hundreds and thousands of people that uh, demand their services, religious services, um, from Reform rabbis. But we cannot uh, give them that. Uh, I cannot lead a funeral, a wedding, or conversion. In the eye of the Orthodox community and the eyes of the state of Israel, my state, um, I'm nothing. I'm not a rabbi. It's ridiculous. It looks like a wedding, it was a wedding. But this did not constitute a legal marriage for Carmen and Uri. They had a rabbi, but he was the wrong type. Reform. Only weddings officiated by the Orthodox are recognised by the state. So now this, this wedding wasn't recognised. No. And so what did you do to have a recognised wedding? We went to Cyprus. Mm -hmm. Civil weddings are not allowed in Israel, so Jewish couples must be married by an Orthodox rabbi or leave the country to do the paperwork. That was the certificate they gave us. And the marital trade in Cyprus is booming. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that our members, Jews, when they want to get married, um, the clerk sitting in Cyprus, in Papo, Solanaka, that during the, the morning is a fisherman and during the evening is uh, uh, a mayor of a small village, uh, he is better than me uh, to issue them a marriage certificate. What's most ridiculous, according to liberal activists, is that the real power of the Orthodox lies not in the synagogues, it lies here, in the Knesset, the Israeli parliament. In the turbulent world of coalition politics, the religious parties have long held the balance of power in governments of both the left and the right. That means that although the Orthodox represent only about one-fifth of the population, their political clout far outweighs their numbers. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces a no-confidence vote, with confidence. He would not be in power without the support of the religious parties, and with his government's razor-thin majority, he cannot afford to get them offside. They've made it perfectly clear they'll withdraw their support if he gives too much ground to secular and liberal Jews. I don't say we're better than others, but we have a message, we have a goal, and uh, we, we have to do what God told us. Rabbi Avraham Ravitz is the leader of one of the ultra-Orthodox parties in Israel's ruling coalition. He also heads the parliament's powerful finance committee. He claims any watering down of Orthodox authority would jeopardize not only the Jewish faith, but the Jewish people. It's laws that we have from the Bible, and we are not authorized to change the Bible, like we're not authorized to change our identity of being Jewish.
the total mixture between religion and politics corrupted both systems. The democracy is like sex. When it's good, it's very good. When it's bad, it's also good. Avraham Berg is head of the Jewish Agency, which has helped Jews from many different cultures and backgrounds immigrate to Israel. And the struggle in Israel in the coming 50 years is going to be the struggle over these issues. If I have to isolate one of them and to say this is the most crucial one, the most uh, energetic one, the most problematic one, the most threatening one, I would say church and state. An Orthodox Jew himself, he believes the state must accommodate all streams of Judaism if the faith is to survive. And I'll say something very clear to all of my Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox friends. With no democracy, there is no Israel. This is actually the challenge, how to modernize and uh, reform the traditional Jewish messages and to make them relevant to the individual modern Jew. The battle to shape Israel's identity is not being fought only by power brokers in the big cities, but by ordinary people in ordinary towns like Pardis Hanna. When Leora Dahan moved into this new neighbourhood in July, she thought she had found a piece of paradise. When her neighbours shifted in a short time later, they thought so too. Unfortunately for everyone, paradise is a very subjective thing. עמדו נשים בכוונה, לא בשביל שרוצים אולי לדבר משהו, אלא הלכו חצי ערומות, הלכו במחשופים, מול אברכים, מול אנשים שצריכים לשמור על העיניים. לא, בכדי שיצאו, שיראו אותם, לגרום לפרובוקציה. Leora and her secular neighbors believe the provocation comes from ultra-Orthodox rabbi Raphael Bublil and his followers. They are want us uh, to behave as they think we had to behave and to believe in what they believe. I don't have anything against religious people. But when uh, someone is coming to my neighborhood and tell me how to dress up, I don't think that it's fair. It began as a war of words, ultra-Orthodox signs calling for modest dress and religious developments, versus secular signs to do as you please. <laughs> then the ultra-Orthodox classrooms appeared on vacant public land. Next came the alleged attacks. <laughs> We didn't do it. We didn't do it. Of course he will say that uh, we did it. Because we heard music and we have a little party, he broke the, um, uh, the stereo. Just put it... Uh, uh, broke it. Came to my house inside uh, and broke it. When the people of the church came to them, they asked them to say, it's not going to be a problem. There's a problem from the church. תוך כדי הוויכוח קרה מה שקרה. כדור למור! שאם ירצו לסגור מקום אחד כאן, נפתח עוד עשרה מקומות. אנחנו נמשיך בפרדס חנה, התורה תמשיך בכל דרך. איך? אני משאיר לבורא עולם שהוא יחליט איך. In Israel, the pressure for change is mounting.
A rally in Tel Aviv called to protest against religious coercion attracted thousands. At stake, many believe, much more than just religious freedom. So the issue is not the rights of reform rabbis or conservative rabbi or secular against orthodox. The fight today is, would we have peace here? What will be the shape of the state of Israel? How would you can live in a modern country uh, touching his neighbors. Without a separation between religion and state, Avraham Berg fears the worst. Bloodshed, civil war, uh, divisiveness. Look, when I look at the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin, for me it was not just a simple political assassination on the background of the peace process. Yigal Amir, the murderer of Yitzhak Rabin, did it out of religious conviction. He did it out of his religious, from his religious point of view. And he analyzed and accepted Yitzhak Rabin as the embodiment of the Zionist secularism in Israel. So for me, Yitzhak Rabin was not just a victim of the peace process, he was a victim of the church and state combat. Across the rooftops of Old Jerusalem, Jews are celebrating Lag Bomer, a festival about light and enlightenment. For ultra-Orthodox Rabbi Ingbar, it's what Judaism is all about. It's all about light. The world's about light. The Torah is light. We are about light. We're about bringing light into the world. But the sparks which fly across this, the heart of Judaism, could just as easily start a wildfire as cast an illuminating glow. In many ways, ultra-Orthodox and liberal Jews are fighting for the same thing, survival of their faith in the modern age. Hopefully, they won't have to destroy each other to achieve it. <laughs>